ஸ்ரீ குரு பிவோ நம வெல்கம் பேக் டு ஆல் அவர் வியூவர்ஸ் ஃபார் திஸ் செகண்ட் அண்ட் த கன்க்ளூடிங் செஷன் ஆன் பகவத்கீதாஸ் என்னன்சியேஷன் ஆஃப் த டர்ம் யோகா த இட் அண்ட் இட்ஸ் கண்டெக்சுவல் மீனிங் பை சுவாமினி சத்வித்யானந்த சரஸ்வதிஜி வெல்கம் பேக் சுவாமினிஜி தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் அக்ரீங் ஃபார் தீஸ் செஷன்ஸ் ஸோ without further ado i'll just start with a prayer and then we'll go ahead with the session sada shiva samarambham shankara charya madhyamam asmada charya paryantam vande guru paramparam ishvaro guru ratmeti murti veda vibhagine vyoma vatsapta dehaya ர்ணே விஷ்ணுயாம்ரம் பஷேமாட்சீரங்கைஸ்துஷ்டுவாகும் சஸ்தனூபிஷேமேவிதையோ புஷா விஷ்வேதாஸ்தாட்சியோ அரிஷ்டனேமிஸ்தினோ பிரஹஸ்பதிர்தோ ஓ சஹ நோத்து சஹ வீரியம் கரவாவை தேஜஸ்வினீத்தமஸ்து மாவிஷாவை ஓஷாந்தி ணபதிகும்பவீனாமுபமஸ்தமம் ஜேஷ்டராஜம் பிரமணஸ்பதனோதிசீதனம் ஓகணபதே நம குருர்பிரம்மா குருர்விஷ்ணு குருர்தேவோ மகேஸ்வர குருசாட்சாத்மைமூர்த்தமஸ்தம் வரதே காமிணே வித்யாரம்பம் கரிஷாமே சித்திர்பவத்து மே சதா வசுதேவசுதேவம் கம்சாணூரமர்தனம் தேவகீ பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரு நமஸ்தே டு ஆல் சோ லாஸ்ட் செஷன் வி சா கண்டெக்ஷுவல் மீனிங் ஆஃப் யோக so there is a question what is this patanjal yoga sutra first of all in our vaidik culture we accept shad darshan which are astika astika means they accept veda as a praman so nayayika vaisheshika nayayika by gautam muni vaisheshika by kanada muni then sankhya by kapil muni and then yoga by patanjali muni then purva mimamsa which is a karma kanda by jaimini sutra and uttar mimamsa brahma sutra vedanta upanishad so within that shad darshan we have this patanjali yog shastra so patanjali yog sutra is there 
Now, I have actually, I can show you, I have written book on Patanjali Yoga Sutra in Gujarati with all sutras, with Vyas Bhashya and on Bhashya, there is a Vignan Bhikshuk Tika is there. Entire Yoga Sutra, understand this. There are four padas are there. Samadhi Pad, Sadhana Pad, Vibhuti Pad. So, there is no mention of Kundalini. There is no mention of Shat Chakra. Entire Yoga Shastra, if you see, it is not mentioned at all. What all this Dhyan Lord nowadays going on, it is also not mentioned. Dhyana, hardly one or two sutras are there. Tatra Ekatanata Dhyanam. That is a sutra. Ekadesha Nibandaha Dharana Tatra Ekatanata Dhyanam. Samadhi is there. Nirvikal Samadhi, Savikal Samadhi. So that is a Yoga Sutra. Second thing, in Yoga Sutra, Ishwara is a Vishesha Purusha. Which is Asprashta. Asprashta means Karma, Karma Bhala. All these are not touched. So that is Vishesha Purusha Ishwara. In Yoga Sutra, nowhere it is mentioned that Jivan Ishwar Aikya is mentioned. Jiva, through the Savikalp Samadhi, he gets rid of the karma and gets moksha. That is a Yoga Sutra, Sada Darshan, understand? Which is called Yoga Darshan. Then there is a Hatha Yoga. That is a book, Hatha Yoga Pradipika. I have not studied that book, so I cannot say much about that. So, Yoga, when we say, then there is a there is a certain people they talk about four yogas karma yoga bhakti yoga dhyan yoga and raj yoga so according to them those who are rajasic very active karma yoga is there. those who are very emotional this is not my understanding this is how the people talk those who are very emotional, <coughs> Bhakti Yoga is there. Those who are highly intellectual people, Gnan Yoga. And those who cannot do any of this, go for the Yoga, Raj Yoga. But when we look into Bhagavad Gita, in third chapter, Arjun, when Arjun asked, what should I do? Should I go for a war or should I get rid of these things? Tadekam vada nishchitya yena shreyom apnuya. Tell me one of this, having decided, tell me one through which I can gain the shreya moksha. Here in Gita, we see the way Bhagavan answers. He didn't say go for karma or go for sannyasa, no. The answer is Lokesh means Dvividanishta Pura Prokta Mayanaga. Gnani Yogena Sankhyanam Karma Yogena Yogin. So there is two yoga, Karma Yoga and Gnani Yoga. And this. So in, even in the beginning of uh, this Gita, Sangati Bhashya, Shankaracharya says Dvividaha Vaidika Dharma. Pravruttihi, nivruttihi. And so, Lokesh means Dvivita Nishta. Nishta means what? It is a lifestyle. The one lifestyle with actions are involved. Another lifestyle where knowledge, Shatra, Shravanam, Bhakti, Japa, Tapa, that is involved. So, this one is a lifestyle of sannyasa, one is a lifestyle of action. So, Karma Yoga and Gnana Yoga. According to Bhagavad Gita, only two are there. Karma Yoga and Gnana. Karma Yoga, we already saw in the last session. 
And karma yoga and gnan yoga also are not two. Karma yoga makes us ready for the knowledge. So sattva shuddhi. Ahara shuddha, that's what Sandhavya Upanishad says. Ahara shuddha, sattva shuddhi. Ahara akriyante indriya hiti ahara. Not only bhojanam is called ahara. That which you perceive through the senses is called ahar. Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasaganda, all five are ahar. And when there is a purity, there is a sanctity in this object of perceive, perception. Sattva Shuddhi, your mind, Sattva means mind, your mind will be pure. Sattva Shuddhi, Shuddha, Dhruva, Smrutihi, then whatever you are listening to Guru is remains in your mind. So Karma Yoga is meant for the Antakaran Shuddhi. So it's a preparation. And then Gnani. And there is no option for Gnani Yoga. Gnana Deva to Kaivalyam. Bhagavan also in fourth chapter says, Nahi gnane na sadruksham pavitra mihavitya. Knowledge is ultimate which removes all kind of the impurities. And therefore, gnan yoga is the goal of our life. Because by gnanam only we can gain the moksha. Fourth chapter only Bhagavan said that. That through this only, knowledge only, one gain punar janma navidya. So make sure there are only two yogas, karma yoga and gnana. Karma yoga means where the action is required, action, actions are involved. Now when I say action, understand this, there are three types of the actions. Sharirik karma, vachika karma, and manasa karma. Sharirik karma, we do puja, soda shupachara puja, yajna, all this is sharirik karma. Vachika karma, where we chant Bhagavad Gita, we do the parayanam of Ra Ramayana. Now from tomorrow, Navratri star, Saptakshati part, we will do. Vishnu Sahasrama part, Lalita Sahasranama part. It's called our vachika. Japa also is there. Kirtanam also is there. It's all vachika karma. Then manasa karma, which is meditation. Pure meditation means only mind is involved. In puja, when we do sharirik karma, our speech also is involved because while doing the puja, when doing abhishek, we chant Rudri, we chant Purushukta. So, Vachika Karma also is there. And our mind also is involved into it. That's so, Sharik, Sharirik Karma, when we say, all three are involved. Then, in Vachika, mind and the speech is involved. And Manasa Karma, pure mental actions. Therefore, in fifth chapter, Bhagavan says, that through this, Yoginaha karma kurvanti. What is the purpose of the action? Kayena manasa kevala indriye rapi. Through the kaya, through the vacha, through the mind, through the senses. This yogi is performing action. What is the purpose of that? Yogina karma kurvanti sangam tekto atma shuddhaya. Their atma is not the satchidananda atma. Atma means mind. So, Bhagavan very clearly said, Karma Yoga is meant for the purification of the mind. Now, as I said, Karma, so, Bhakti also is a Karma, understand? When I say Yoga, son, I am doing, that is also Karma. Prana, I am doing, that is also Karma. Meditation, I am doing, that is also Manasa Karma. And therefore, all this, whatever we say, karma yogi you say, bhakti yogi you say, hatha yogi you say, raja yogi you say, ya man, meditation you say, 
all comes under one title called karma yoga. Make this clear because Bhagavan says this. Lokes mean dvivita nishta pura purokta mayana. Ganana yogena sankhyana karma yogena yogi. And this. So Ganana yoga and karma yoga only two are. Within karma yoga we have this category. So this yoga when we say we have to have very clear understanding in our mind. So let's go further for our sixth chapter. At the end, Arjun asked Bhagwan because Arjun was already more than 80 years old when he was going for this war. So he has a doubt whether he will gain this knowledge, whether he will gain the nishtha in this knowledge or not. Before or during the war, if he will get killed, what will happen to him? So that's why Arjun asked question. Bhagwan, even if whatever you have said is fine. Suppose ayati shraddhaya petaha yoga chalita manasaha, the person who can because of his prarabdha, because of the not proper preparation in the mind, he can move away from this knowledge. Aprapi yoga samsiddhi, not gaining this samyak darshanam, yoga samsiddhi means samyak darshana of the Bhagavan already said. Sarvatra samadarshan. So this samadarshan, every day seeing one Ishwara, if the person doesn't gain this samadarshan, yoga samsi, kam gati krishna gachat, what will be his lot? What will happen? He has not gained so many punyas because of which he can go to swarga, brahma loka, because he was doing nishkam karma, niswarth nishkam karma he was doing. And he has not gained knowledge. So what will happen to him? And therefore, Bhagavan says, and he said, Bhagavan, Bhagavan, here I see you only who can, who can clear my doubt. Etanya samshayam prishnam chetu marhasi asheshta. And so Bhagavan, very beautiful sentence is given. Nahi kalyanakrutta shit durgatim tat gachat. Look at the person who has accepted this path of knowledge, there is no going back for him and no returning from him. But the person has to choose. See, that is where this karma swatantrata comes here. The freedom over action, we, our free will is very important here. Because we have to choose. What we choose Accordingly, we get. A lot of people, they tell me, so many things, why I get these kind of things? That is what we have chosen. Understand? If Bhagavan is giving by his own will, then there is a problem with Bhagavan. There is a partiality. There is a cruelty. Understand? We get exactly what we choose. Just Swamiji used to tell Whole life is what? Whole human life, life is nothing but the series of decisions. What you choose, you gain. And therefore, Bhagavan says, the one who has chosen this Shreya Marga, Gnana Marga, Moksha Marga, there is no Durgati. And in, 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 in for the fourth chapter, you know, if this is the knowledge one gain and one gain the moksha, then why everybody is not going for the moksha? So Bhagavan himself answered that Manushyanam Sahasreshu Kastidyata. Out of thousands of human beings, some will try for this knowledge. Yatatam of this Siddhanam Kaschin Mam Veti Tattva. Out of that also, somebody can know my real. Nature, tattva. 
and their food. No? What we choose is important. And Bhagwan said, the person who a Kalyana married. In South, you know, the Kalyana means marriage. Here, Kalyana means Shreya, Moksha Mara. So Bhagwan says, the person who has chosen this Kalyana Marga, the Shreya Marga, there is no Dudgati. So, there the word is used, Yoga Brashta. So, what is this Yoga Brashta? This also is a big uh, topic. What is Yoga Brashta? Bhagwan has not used yoga brush to understand. Arjun has used this one and that's why Bhagwan continues that word. But in the eyes of Bhagwan, there is no yoga brush to understand. Because who is yoga brush to tell me? Everybody is trying. There was a, there is our, one of our Ashvidya Swami. When he was very younger, he started teaching Vedanta. I'm talking about almost 40 years before. So at a very young age, he gained through Swamiji's course and he learned and then Swamiji asked him to start teaching. So he started teaching in Gujarat. In beautiful talks. And so one day when he was giving lectures, one lady was so impressed by his knowledge and his clarity. So when the lecture was over, the lady, old lady, he went to she went to Swamiji and did Namaskar and said, Swamiji, you are so lucky. That at this young age, you gain this knowledge. So you are ahead of me. Though you are from the standpoint of this body, you, you are younger. But you are in this knowledge, you are ahead of me. So that time, that Swami answered very beautifully. He said, how, how can you say that? That I am ahead of you. Maybe I am here after my 50 births try. And you are listening to Vedanta. You have come to Vedanta after maybe 25 births of Manushya. That means you are ahead of me. And Anek Janma Samsita Tato Yati Parampati And therefore there is nothing, nobody can say yoga brush. Everybody is on the way. But because of some prarabdha, he get moved away from this for time being. Understand this. And therefore, this, when we say yoga brush, See, I'm, I'm giving you, I'm using the, wherever the word yoga comes, I'm trying to bring those verses. So people start telling about this yoga and all these things. Even Patanjali Yoga, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, if you see, as we have in Vedanta, you know, Uttam Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, Adham Adhikari, Nyuna, Kanishta. Same way it is there in Yoga, Sutta. Very same like what? For Uttam Adhikari, there is no Ashtang Yoga. Yoga Chitta Nirodha. No, Nirodha, how can you get that Nirodha? Chitta Nirodha. Abhyasa Vairagya Bhyam Tan Nirodha. Look at this. Same year, sixth chapter, Arjuna also asked, Chanchanam hi mana Krishna, what Bhagavan said? Abhyasena tu konteya vairagena cha grihyate. Same. There also says one. Abhyasa vairagya abhyam tan nirodha. Abhyasa means what? Practice. You study Shastra. It already, see, 
People think in Yoga Sutra there is no Shastra. We don't need to study Shastra. No. Already it is there in Yam and Niyam. Swadhyaya Ishwara Pranidhana. Yama means how you are transacting in this world. Ahimsa, Satya, Aparigraha, all these are transactions in this. Niyama is our personal life. Santosha, Shaucham, Tapaha, Swadhyaya, Ishwara Pranidhan. Look at this. So Bhakti is also Ishwara Pranidhan. Surrender to Ishwara. Swadhyaya means you study the Shastra. It is there. All the people, those who are following, oh, we are yogi. We don't need the Shastra. This is theory. We are practical. What is practical? So many wrong concepts are going. Abhyasa means you study the Shastra and follow the Shastra. Vairagya means all this day-to-day -day mundane life, you know, detach yourself from this. Then also it is not possible. Kriya Yoga, understand. There also it comes. Kriya Yoga, Tapaha, Ishwara Prani. Not only that, one more secret I will tell you. This when Patanjali Muni is telling, Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tan Nirodha. Look at this. There itself there is a sutra says Ishwara Pranidhanat Va. Just by surrendering to Ishwara also one can gain Samadhi. Nirodha. All this are, we have example of Mirabai, Tukaram, so many bhaktas that completely dedicated themselves to Bhagwan. Every state you see so many bhaktas. Understand? It's Sutra is telling. Ishwara Pranidhana Dva. Dva means option is there. You just surrender totally to Ishwara. You accept everything, whatever comes to your life. You already saw Ishwara Arpan Buddhi, Prasad Buddhi. Tan Nirodha. That is also not the Madhya Madhikari, then Kriya Yoga. Tapaha, Ishwara Pranidhana. That is also Sama. Then for the Kanisht, Adhama Adhikari, the Ashtang Yoga is there. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Prana. But nowadays what yoga we see is Asana and Pranaya. Not only that, the worst part of modern yoga is that it is health oriented. Worst part of it. Asana, Pranayam has nothing to do with your blood pressure or your heart attack. Or your knee problem. It has nothing to do with it. Understand this. Yoga itself is what? Yama, Niyama is the first thing. Who has the Yama and Niyama? Shaucham, Santosha, Tapaha, Swadhyaya, Ishwara Pranidha, Ahinsa, Shaptya, Brahmacharya, Parigraha, Asteya. These two are these two are main. Understand? They are the base for the yoga. Therefore, nowadays what we see is nothing. It's all health oriented. It has nothing to do with Patanjali Yoga Sutra, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, or even Hatha Yoga. That's why Swami said all oh, Neo Vedanti and Neo Yoga is. Hasya Yoga also is there. Dhrutya Yoga also is there. Everywhere we connect this word yoga. But it has nothing to do with all this. Therefore, make sure, make clear in your mind Karma Yoga and Gnana Yoga. And Karma Yoga also, all these things are. Patanjali Yoga Sutra also comes under it. Bhakti also comes under it. Whether it is a Madhava Acharya, Nimbaka Acharya, Vallabha Acharya, Ramanuja Acharya, everything comes under it. We are not against anybody. Understand? We need all that. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all this, you see, go, go to Vrindavan. See, there is a bhakti. Bhakya Bihari, Radha Raman. So, that is a bhakti. That is also karma. So, when Bhagavan here is telling that yoga brashta means one who is moved away from the gaining of knowledge. And, but still Bhagavan says durgati tatna gachat. There is no adhogati, durgati for him. And so, once you have chosen the Ganan Yoga, Ganan Marga or Moksha Marga, the four Purusha, the Dharma, the Kam Moksha, once you have chosen this Moksha Purusha, so Arjuna asks, what will be the Gati of that particular person, that seeker? And so Bhagavan says, only two possibilities are there. Once that human body, the person leave this human body. If he has done a lot of tapasya in this life and gained a lot of punya in this life, then prapya punya krutam lokan shashwati samaha ushitva. Because of his lot of punya, he gains that Loka, Punya Loka. He lives there for a long time. Shashwati Sama. Sama means time. This beautiful word, Sama is a beautiful word for the time. And even in this, uh, uh, what you call, Aben, in the, in the ocean, you know, Tide will be there and then ebb will be there. But there is a time when it's called summer. That also is called summer. Between the tide and ebb, there is a 10 minutes or 20 minutes are there where it is quiet, summer. Is it time? To Shatwati Sama means for a long time he will be there. But from there, Understand because already Bhagwan is going to tell in the further that suppose somebody goes to heaven, what will happen? Shine punya barke lokam vishan. But here, what will happen? Shuchinam shrimatam gehe yoga prashto vijaya. After having a long time in the heaven, in the in the punya loka. He will come back here in the family which is very uh, pavitra, suchina, dharmanishta. And Shri Matam means a lot of wealth is there. That means it's very easy life for the person. Not struggling for money or food or cloth or education. It's very easy life. So, I mean, it's an easy starting. So, then he gained that which very conducive situation for him to gain the knowledge. And therefore, Athava, then Bhagavan said there is another option. One option is that he gained Punya Loka and then he comes back into the very wealthy family which is very conducive situation for him for gaining knowledge. Athava, or if he has not gained for, if not, then lot of punya karma. Then what will happen? Yogina meva kule bhavanti dhimatam. Very intelligent family, which is yogi family. So it's better than that one, because there there is a chances of destruction. Here there is no chance of destruction. Tatradam buddhi. That's why Bhagavan said, etadhi durlabataram. This kind of the family, to gain that kind of the family, the birth in that family itself is a very rare. And once he gained here, what will happen? Tatra buddhi sanyogam labhate morvadehikam. Whatever knowledge he has gained in the previous birth, previous bodies, he, he continues that here. 
Now here, again this yoga comes up. Vignasurapi yogasya shabda brahmati vakta. So the jignasu, look at this now. Jignasurapi yogasya, yogasya jignasu. So here yoga means we work. Gnana yoga, because word jignasu is there. Jignasu means what? The one who has a desire to know the reality of this world. The one who has a desire to know the reality of this world. So that yoga will be what? Knowledge. Understand? So, Shabda Brahmati Vartanda means he, see I always talk in Panchadashi also, I have a really talk about this. When we, we use the word Shabda Ananda, Brahma, Atma, Sakshatkar. The word we are using. Understand? But the meaning should be there. Shabdartha should be there. In, in Shastra it is called Sphuranam. You hear the word and the meaning should be there in your mind. When I say rose, the rose comes to your mind. Look at So, so many words, akshara, avyaya, nitya, all these words we have. But what is the meaning? We don't have that sphuranam. The, here I can use the word realization. That realization of the word is not there. Brahma we hear. Satchisattva swarup, chit swarup, ananda swarup, we hear. But what is the meaning? <coughs> For that, we need contemplation. That's what this whole sixth chapter is contemplation. We have to do that contemplation. Through the contemplation, we abide into the meaning of the word Brahma. And therefore, Bhagavan here said, Shabda Brahma Ativar. He, he, he crosses the word and he understands the meaning of it. So, yogasya here means what? Not ashtanga yoga, not patanjali yoga. Here, yogasya means it is a knowledge. So, yoga abhyasa, purva abhyasa, that means whatever abhyasa he has, a sanskara he has developed in his life, that oh, yoga abhyasa will be awakened in this life and he will go for this knowledge only. He doesn't go for anything else. So, Bhagavan, here only the 45th time, what I said, you know, Anek Janma Singh, Arjun, this is not one life. This is Anek human bodies. We have gone through a lot of human bodies and during those human body time, we have gained this knowledge, we have practices, lot of Punya Karam, because of which at the moment we are listening to with that. But Bhagavan wants to praise this Gdani, this wise person. And therefore, Bhagavan uses the word yogi. So, this is the verse I want. Now, I have given you the background. Now, I will look at this. Tapasvibhyo adhiko yogi. Gnani pyopi admato dikaha karmi vyasya adhiko yogi tasmad yogi bhavach. Shankaracharya Ji is not giving any meaning here. Yogi Shabda he is used and that's it. Because he thinks that already Bhagwan has talked about Jignasu, Bhagwan has talked about the knowledge of the self, Bhagwan has already discussed that Sarmada, Samadarshanam and therefore Shankaracharya thinks that I don't need to give the meaning for the word Yogi and that's why he is not giving any word meaning for the Yogi. But here, it's a very misleading verse. Yogi is adhika, is much better than the tapasvi, the one who is performing the austerities. Yogi is much better than the gnani, knowledgeable person. Yogi is better than the people, those who are performing actions. And therefore, Arjun, you become yogi. 
Now, you go and read other swamis or other uh, tikas and see what they are talking. I have seen. They all talk, yogi means what? This karm, this uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra Samadhi they bring. It has nothing to do with Samadhi. Understand? Why? Because already what is the context? Sixth chapter is talking about Atma Samstha Manakritva Nakinche the Pichin Look at it. Then suddenly you talk about Samadhi. Atma Sarva Bhuta Samatmanam Sarva Bhuta Nicha Atmani Ikshate Yogi Yukta Atma Sarvatra Samadarshana. One who has gained this Samadarshana. Everywhere he sees the self. Not only that. Yomam Pashyati Sarvatra Sarvam Chamai Pashyati. Bhagavan is telling the person who sees everything in me and me in everything. Look at everything in me, me in everything. Tasyaham na pranashyami sachamena pranashyami. I never move away from his vision. He doesn't move away from my vision. So this is the Ek Advitiya Brahma Gnanam. It's not that the two things are there. Atma is everywhere, all pervasive. Ishwar also is all pervasive. That means Atma and Ishwara are not two, they are one. So when Bhagavan is talking about this Samadarshan, Narjuna also a question the same thing. Bhagavan, this that Samya Yoga, Yoyam Yoga Stvaya Prokta Samya Namadusuta. Everywhere seeing the same reality. That is a bit difficult for him. And therefore, at the end, Bhagavan is not going to change the topic. Contextually, if you see, here also the word yogi means what? The person who has gained this Samyak Darshan. He sees himself everywhere. And there also Bhagavan is given how he sees everything as one self. Samaloshtasma Kanjana. When we look into the inert object, he sees the same tattva, same reality. Not only that, Suhurun Mitra means what kind of the relationship we can have with other human beings. These are the relationship we have. Suhurun. Suhurun means what? The, when you are in difficulty or when you are in need for some help, somebody comes without an introduction, comes, helps you, walks away. That's called Suhuru. Mitra. Mitra means having a certain common qualities. And there is a kind of snail. Love for each other. Care for each other. That's called Mitra. Ari. Ari means Shatru, person who has an enmity in his or her mind. Udasi. Udasi. Kenapi Paksham Nabad. He doesn't go for anything. Keeps himself away from all this. Madhyastha. One who tries to compromise. Madhyastha. Bandhu, relatives. Sadhu, Swapita, Pat. Sadhu. Here, Shankaracharya gives the definition of sadhu. Shastra Anukari. The person who follows the Shastra is called sadhu. Nowadays, what sadhu? Wearing this clothes, people think he is sadhu. No. Tilakam, sadhu. No. Shastra Anukari. One who follows the Shastra. Tadviprita Papishu. The one who doesn't follow the Shastra. I'm not telling. Shankaracharya has given this definition. So these are the relationships we have with other human beings. Pandita Samadarshi. The Pandita, the person who has 
gain this knowledge, he sees the same Atma in everywhere. So this Samadarshana is talked about. Suddenly Bhagavan is not going to talk about Astang Yogi here. So then what is the meaning of this Tapasvibho, Tapasvibhyaha Adhikaha Yogi? Look at this. Tapasvi means what? Austerity means you live your life with minimum enjoyments. Or by your will, you give up the enjoyments which are not against the Shastra. You can eat two times a day, but by your own will, you say, I will eat one set. See now, Chaturmas is the Chaturmas. A lot of people, they eat only one meal. So that is called the Pashya. Whatever the Nishiddha, you don't have to follow those enjoyments, but whatever enjoyment which is not against the Shastra, that also when you give up, Vihita Bhoga it is called. That is called Tapasya. You talk, nothing wrong in that. There is no papam in that. But you decide that, okay, on Ekadashi, there will be Maunam. See, this Maunam also is the Tapasya. A lot of people, they follow. Ekadashi, Swamuvar, Shaniwar. Then they follow this. Mauna. They don't talk. Talking is not a papa. But by will you avoid. Well, Mauna. Tapashya. So Bhagavan is telling, this yogi means that wise person is much better than this tapas. Why? Because tapasya also is a required. But only tapasya is not going to take you to the moksha. Tapasya is there. But that Shastra Shravanam, last session, we, as I said, the Shravana Manana Nididhyasana, Antaranga Sadhana has to be. Gnani Bhya Adiko Yogi. Gnani means what? Gnana Matra Shastra Pandityam. Shastra Panditya is there. But in the life, if you see, I had a very shocking experience in my life. There is a book in, on Gita in Gujarati, <clears throat> written by one person. What he has done is, it's a really hard work he has done. He studied in different uh, uh, commentaries on Gita, Advaita comments, Sri Dhari, Sri Kanti, Neel Kanti, Shankaracharya Bhashya, Madhusudana, Shankaranandi, so many tikas. And what he did is that every verse he has taken the main points of this tika and he has collected all of them. And like that, he has written the entire Bhagavad Gita. Just imagine how much he must have studied to write that Gita. All Madhusudan. And then he mentioned that Madhusudan Acharya has given this meaning, Shankara has given this meaning, Neil Kanti has given this meaning, and this. So he is whole Bhagavad Gita. And I was, because it's in Gujarati and it's easy to read and also very nicely as written. So I was reading that. When I was studying Gita, I was reading this. And then when I started teaching in the town where I was teaching, I came to know that this the person who has written this book is in the same town. So morning I, I used to go for a walk. And the same road, his home was there. And so we found out myself and Swami Pratip Budanji who was in Surat. He's no more. So Swamiji's uh, talks were there. And so Pratip Budanji public talks were there. And uh, I just mentioned to Swamiji, Swamiji, you know that Bhagavad Gita we are using? That person is he in Valsadam, here only. He said, really? 
So let's go and see him. I said, yes, Swami, I also want to see. Let us go. And so we found out through somebody and how we can contact him. And we put words to him. And then he said, okay, you come 10 o'clock. So Swami said, okay, after breakfast, we'll go and see him. So we went. I'm not labeling anybody or I'm not telling right and wrong, understand. I'm just giving you the, the example. I'm not telling he is wrong or right or he was bad or I'm not telling anything about it. I'm just practically I'm telling this what Bhagwan is telling. So we went 10 o'clock, he said, oh, 10 o'clock we went. It's a beautiful old type house was. But he was there single. And because of his old age, there were caretakers were there. <clears throat> So when we went there, the caretaker asked us, and then we said, uh, he asked us that 10 o'clock we can come and see him. So we and he said, okay, okay, yeah, he told me to sit here, he will come. And when this caretaker went and told him, he got angry with him. He was very angry with him. So we heard, of, he was shouting at this person. So we heard that shouting. Then he came out. And he behaved so weird with us. We have nothing to do with him. At this so it, it's, it's very difficult. What, what Arjuna is asking and what he, Bhagavan is telling that Samadarshana is not that easy. And we, we know the word, Gnani Bhya Shankaracharya, that is Shastra Panditya. You can gain the Shastra Panditya, but to have that in our life, to have that vision in our life, it's not that easy. And therefore, Bhagavan says, Gnani Bhya Adhiko Yogi, the person who has abided into this Samadarshana is much more, much better than this Shastra Pandit. Then he says, Karmi Bhyascha Adhiko Yogi. Karmi Bhyascha. Look at this. The person who is performing actions, he is much better than this. Why? Because action is required for the purification of the mind. But if you get into the action, then it becomes your habit. So, third chapter already, Bhagavan has discussed all. Nahi kashik shanam api jatu tishthati akarma kripa. Karma, it becomes the part and partial of our life. So, we cannot sit without performing any action. See, that's why a lot of people have this concept that this Vedanta is a theory. There is nothing theory. Knowledge in Atma, there is no practical and no theory understand. And therefore, Karma Yogi means what? Bhagavan said that those who are performing Yajnihotra, the Karma, they are good. But Gnani, the, the wise person who has gained this Samadarshana is much better than this karma. The people, those who are following the karmas, performing the actions. So here also, we have to understand this yogi word. That means what? To gain this Samadarshana is a goal of our life. We have to see everywhere this Brahman. And for that, all this six chapter, whole entire six chapter is meant for. That what kind of the lifestyle we have, what kind of the position, posture to for meditation. Shuchaudeshas. And so for meditation, all the instructions are given. Because meditation also is required. Brahmagnana meditation also is required. And therefore, Bhagavan is giving these instructions here. But we have to understand that goal is not meditation. Goal is not action. Goal is not tapasharya. Our goal is to gain that samadarshan. 
फिफ्थ चैप्टर ऑल्सो भगवान से हियर ऑल्सो इज टाइम सो द समदर्शन द पर्सन हु हैज गेन दैट समदर्शन इज कॉल्ड योगी हियर and therefore bhagwan said tasmad yogi bhava arjun arjun you also become that yogi the person who has gained the samadarshana arjun you also become yogi you also gain that knowledge see everything is one issue so that's a goal of course that means doesn't mean that all this is not required oh so bhagwan said this samadarshana is much better than karma then i am going to give a karma the tapasya tapasvi all no these three are required understand karma also is required tapasya also is required shastra panditya also is required understand but only this is not going to give you samadarshan <clears throat> same thing is there in katopanishad प्रवचने बहुधा श्रुते नायमात्मा प्रवचने दिस आत्मा इज नॉट गेन्ड थ्रू द प्रवचन मीन टीचिंग बहुना श्रुते नॉट बाय लिसनिंग टू मच लिसनिंग ऑफ द शास्त्र Medha, the panditya, this medha, medha sukta also is. There are different faculty of intellect is there. Pragna, medha, buddhi, and then different viveka. So medha means what? ग्रंथ अर्थ धारण शक्ति अलोंग अलोंग विद द मीनिंग यू रिमेंबर द एंटायर बुक इज कॉल्ड मेधा देर वॉज अ लेडी शी मेमोराइज एंटायर भगवत गीता इन गुजराती एंड ऑल अदर प्लेस इज ऑल्सो दिस वेरी कॉमन दिस वर्ड दिस होल भगवद गीता मैंने कंठस्थ कर दिया शी कैन चैंट एंड टैर भगवद गीता कंठस्थ सो जोकिंगली आई से मैं इट इज कंठस्थ आई एम हियर टू मेक इट बुद्धिस्थ just by the words of gita you have memorized the knowledge is not going to come that's what bhagwan says na medhaya that means what you have to give up teaching you have to give up the listening to the shastra you have to give up the memorizing no that's not the meaning what bhagwan is telling here bhagwan is not condemning here understand this this is not ninda of the karmi ninda of the tapasvi ninda of the shastra panditi no he is not condemning all this he is telling this is not enough nayamatma pravachane na labhya na medaya na bahudha shrute that means what something is missing you understand that you need karma you have to perform the actions you have to practice tapasya you have to learn shastra you have to gain that shastra panditya but that is not enough something is missing bhagwan doesn't mention it here yamaraja mentions it there yame vaisha brunute tena labhya the one understand this now again same thing
the one who choose the self yam eva esha brunute the person who choose only esha atma tena lapya the person who chooses only atma he only can gain Swami ji used to tell atma is very jealous he doesn't like anybody else he doesn't share with anybody else you have to choose atma and only atma with atma if you choose something else atma disappears but how yamarada says yame vaishya brunote te na labhya the person who choose the self he gains the self how will he gain Yamarada said, The self itself unfolds itself to the person. Why? Because self is what? Your self existence, self evident person. And therefore, when you choose, it appears in front of you. Tanuho vivruna. Vivruna means open. It opens up itself. You don't have to do anything. You have to choose. And therefore, when Bhagavan is telling Tasmad Yogi Bhavarjana means Arjun, don't miss this self. Don't miss this Samadarshan. People, they go for tapasya and they keep on doing tapasya. People go for the actions and they keep on performing. Nar seva, narayan seva. And they think this is a replacement. No, there is nothing is for that. No replacement. In Nam Yoga, there is no replacement. There is no option in this. See, for this four yoga also, people give an example. Suppose there is a temple on the top of the hill. You can walk, you can go on foot, you can go by rickshaw, you can go by car, you can go by bus. There are options. Are. Similarly, you can gain knowledge, you can gain Bhagwan through this four paths. Let us see the same example. We don't need to go anywhere else. Let us see the example. There are so many options to reach the temple. Understand this properly. To reach the temple, you have options. And by helicopter also, you can. But to have a darshanam, there is only one door. You understand that? Whether a person has come by helicopter or on foot, he has to enter the same door of the temple. Not only that, door also is one. Everyone has to use eyes to see Bhagavan. Understand? Reaching the temple, there are options. But when it comes to the self, darshanam is by eyes. The person who is using helicopter also has to use his eyes to see that Bhagavan. Same way. To gain the purification of the mind, these are the options. Somebody is performing austerity, somebody is performing yajna, somebody is doing naraseva, fine. Options are. But when it comes to the self, no option. And therefore, when Bhagavan is telling Tasmad Yogi Bhavarjan, Bhagavan is telling very clear message Bhagavan is giving. Arjun, all these things are required, but this also is required. There, in Atma Bodh, Shankaracharya gives very nice example. 
पाकस्य वहनिव ज्ञान विना मोक्षन सिद्ध जनरली वी से दिस इज वेरी कॉमन से उपमा कालिदास in the literature whatever is written by kalidas he has given excellent upama similes and therefore in in the literature we say upama kalidas but if you see atma bodh every words there is an example upama so here also with reference to knowledge bhagwa shankaracharya is giving this example pakasya vahnivat pakasya means cooking when you are cooking you have to do a lot of things you have to go to the market and get the vegetables you have to clean the grains you wash it you remove you remove the vessels from the cupboard and you cut the vegetables you wash it you put all masalas all the spices in that cooking doesn't take place the main cause for the cooking is what vahnipat it has to have a touch of the fire then only cooking takes place all other are peripheral things and the main is fire but that also not direct you cannot put rice directly on the fire and you have to put water through the water the fire enters into the grain then no directly you can cook in the on fire so shankara tere says as for the cooking the fire is a main thing similarly pakasya vahnivat gnanam vina moksha nasit if you want to gain moksha without knowledge there is no moksha of course all other things as we are in the cooking we have all the preparations only fire is that that there is there won't be any food we have to do the preparations we have to clean the rice we have to wash the rice we have to wash the vegetable we have to cut the vegetables all the spices we have to keep ready all spices are required vegetables are required cutting of vegetable is required washing the rice is required all these things are required. but only that cooking similarly tapasya also is required karma also is required shastra adhyayan also is required shravanam also is required pravachanam also is required understand pravachanam is not only imparting the knowledge pravachana is also for oneself because when you start teaching you can see there are islands in your mind where there is no clarity teaching also is a learning only through teaching you get the clarity in your mind and therefore nayamatma pravachane na lages just by teaching just by listening to the shastra you can't gain this not so therefore bhagwan is not belittling any of this thing understand but only this is not going to give you moksha and therefore arjun tasmad yogi bhava arjuna therefore arjun you become yogi yogi means the person who has gained this samadarshan then this next verse again is a problem yogi nam api sarvesha madgate na antaratmana within all this among all this yogis the the one who has gained this samadarshan and madgatanantara means one who has gained the knowledge of oneness of jiva and ishvara whose mind is totally abiding in ishvara 
Madgatena Antar, Antaratma in mind, whose mind is totally abided into this Ishwar. Shraddhavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamo mataha. So Bhagavan says, among all yogi nami, among all this samadarshan, samadarshi yogi, the person whose mind is totally engaged into the Ishwara and one who is serving Ishwara, bhajate. How? Shraddhavan. I mean, he has dedicated his life to Ishwara. And he has a total Shraddha in Ishwara. But one say, among all this yogi, he is the best. Yukta, yukta Tamaha means he is the best. That means in seventh chapter, Bhagavan is going to talk about this. Chaturvida, Bhajante, Maam. There are four types of the people, those who are worshipping me. Artaha, the person who is in trouble. Artati, one who wants to fulfill his desire. He has tried these worldly things. He has not gained what he wanted. Then he comes to Bhagavan. To fulfill his desire, artha. Jignas, one who wants to, one, one who has one who is desirous of gaining the knowledge of Vishnu. Gnani Chakvaratash. Udaraha hi evate sarve gnani tu atma evame. Arjun, all these are great. But Gnani is Maya, and therefore the Gnani with Bhakti, understand? Gnani Bhakta, it is called. Bhagavan says, the people, those who have gained this Samadarshana, but the person who has abided himself or herself into the devotion of Bhagavan, he is the best. Because he has dedicated his life to Ishwara. So therefore, it's not that here Bhagwan is telling Bhakti Yoga is better than Gnani, understand? That's not the, what he's telling here. But, see, that's why in, in, in Shastra we say that the, 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 the life of Gnani, wise person, is totally dedicated to Ishwar. He goes by the Ishwar Icha. Prarabdhaya samarpitam svavo. One who doesn't want to have any personal change in the life. Whatever way situation comes to the life, he accepts that. And therefore, Bhagavad says that person who has no any personal agenda, Swamiji's word if I use, he or she doesn't have any personal agenda in the life. He is totally dedicated himself to Bhagavan. Shraddha. He has a total faith in Bhagavan. And he is worshipping Bhagavan. Same yukta tamo. Bhagavan said, This is my opinion, Mata, that he is the best yogi. He is a wise person also, and he has dedicated himself to Bhagavan. It means nothing is there. See, it, it's very beautiful. Moksha means what? There is no personal agenda. There is nothing personal. I want to gain this. I want to go there. I want to gain this. I want to meet him. No. Look at I always tell you, imagine that kind of the mind. Swamiji's word is called enlightened ego. Gnani ahanka. No personal. When I, I, I uh, when we were studying this prasthantra in the ashram, goal was to study the shastra. Then when the end of the course was there, then 
everybody was asked what kind of the lifestyle one wants to lead after this course. You know, that option is there. So then uh, one student asked, so Chomji, what is the life of sannyas or what is the life of sadhu? Then the example was given, the life of sadhu is like a public garden. Anybody can enter anytime and anybody can walk out anytime. Life of sadhu is like a public garden. Anybody can enter, anybody can go. In Sanskrit, it is said, Agate Swagatam Kutya. The person comes to our life, you welcome him. Gachantam Naniva. He moves away from you. Let him go. Yes. So that's free. That's the freedom. That's the freedom. Real freedom is what? Person is free from any kind of personal agenda. Person is free from any kind of the desire. That is what the Lakshana, that is what the characteristics given them. That's the best yogi. It's not that easy. Because when you are learning the Shastra, when you are teaching the Shastra, that also you develop some kind of the personality. And when the personality is developed, then there can be some kind of the personal agenda. And therefore, Bhagavan here is telling, Yaha Shraddhavan Bhajate Maam Same Yuktatam. The person with total shraddha bhajate who serves me is the best. See, there is another secret of sannyasa. Vaidika sannyasa diksha. When the guru decides to give sannyasa, then the last thing is to give up this body. That's why generally the Sanya Diksha is at the bank of the river. So you, you throw this body also into Ganga. Understand? That's a sannyasa. That's the last part of sannyasa. You give this, you throw this body in Ganga. So that also you give up. Then teacher tells, no, 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 don't give up this body. I want this body. Understand this. Then if the teacher doesn't call you back, you have to go to the next. But then teacher says, no, no, no. This upadhi, I need this upadhi for loka kalya. For the welfare of the universe. And therefore, the person who has taken sannyasa has given up the body. Now this body belongs to Ishwara or Guru. That is what, that is why Bhagavan here is telling us. The person who has even given up the body to Ishwara, to Guru, he is the best. But here nothing to do with this what yoga we understand. This yogi means, yogi bhava and yogi namapi means all this yogi means, not all this yogi means karma yogi and bhakti yogi and pati yogi, no. Yogi namapi means all this among all these people, those who have gained this samadarshana, the people who, the person who has totally dedicated himself to Bhagawan, Ishwaricha, he is the best. And therefore, here also we have to understand properly that the yogi word is not meant for the Ashtanga Yoga or any other yoga. It is meant in the meaning of the knowledge only. But when Bhagavan is doing the comparison, he is telling that only this is not. Knowledge is required and therefore Bhagavan said, Tasmat means that logic understand. Tasmat means or not. Therefore, therefore you become yogi. You become yogi means you gain this samadarshan. And gaining this samadarshan only is the goal of human. Therefore, 
karma yoga and gnana yoga is there but our goal of life is knowledge because through the knowledge only we can gain moksha and as in the previous session we already saw moksha means what to get rid of this false identification superimposition i am mortal i am ignorant i am dukhi i am unhappy so that person who is given up that kind of person who is understand that i am sat swarup i am chit swarup i am ananda swarup once gain this knowledge this upadi is totally surrender to bhagwan and he is the best yogi so few other places are there where bhagwan has used this yoga word but i think this is enough if you if you have any questions or if you know somewhere where this yoga is there and you want to understand this yoga word then we can further go so i will go for the questions there is one question i think hmm. yeah same person shall i read it out so many things mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay uh so the question is uh, it is preached that karma lakshana bhakti and upasana lakshana bhakti are preparatory sadhanas that is one will get jnana yogyata prapti and when he goes through jnana yoga he becomes a jnani only when he becomes a jnani moksha or freedom is gained as explained by you since moksha brings shashvati sama it leads to rebirth after long time Uh, if so does moksha be real salvation as aimed by yogi through gyana yoga please clarify does moksha be real salvation okay now the in your question i have a question what is the salvation <clears throat> and what is the moksha see lot of words are being wrongly translated understand moksha be real salvation what is the salvation salvation and moksha are not synonymous understand that the translation of moksha is not salvation at all first thing salvation is a christian word one thing salvation is that god will release you from the sins that is called salvation here we are not done that here moksha means what you know that you are nitya mukta moksha is not it's something to be gained it is a praptasya prapti there salvation means you get rid of your sin and go to heaven and have a heaven like all the time our heaven also is not permanent heaven understand we don't have any permanent loka i always tell there is no citizenship in heaven and there is no citizenship in on earth also we keep moving punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jatare shayan that once you go to heaven once have salvation means you are get rid of your your sins by grace of god permanently you will be in heaven that is what they call salvation for us swarga also is not above swarga there other lokas are there understand buhu buha sava swaha maha janaha tapaha satya so buhu buha swaha that is the third loka for us called swarga and for them that swarga is a salvation for us swarga is not a permanent loka it is also kshine punya mark loka vishu so don't use the word salvation for moksha that is my first thing. moksha means it is a praptasya prapti already you are nitya shuddha buddha mukta swabhava atma brahma upnishad you are pure understand you are pure consciousness can upnishad if you did learn you can see that you are pure consciousness nothing else is there whatever here is a one consciousness and to understand that you are that all pervasive consciousness is called moksha now knowledge and moksha also is what 
that's also the big problem. Knowledge and moksha are two things. We think it is two. It is not two. Let me give you the example of the rope and snake. Person is frightened of the snake. He wants to get rid of snake. Understand this properly. Knowing rope is getting rid of snake. There are two actions. Understand. It is simultaneous. Simultaneous at one time. One point only. Knowing the rope and getting rid of the snake are not two actions. Are not two incident. It is one and the same. Same way. Knowing Atma is moksha. <clears throat> But why we have to say this? Because knowing is first. First you know this is the rope, no more snake is there. Do you understand what I'm telling? It is, it is one shara only, one moment only, but one is first. Knowledge is first. Knowing rope is required, automatically you get rid of snake. Similarly, Knowing the true nature of the self is moksha. It is not that you gain knowledge and then you gain moksha. No. It is yukapat. In Sanskrit, it's called yukapat. Knowing is moksha. Understand. And therefore, moksha is real salvation. That, that itself is a wrong thing. Knowledge is moksha. You know I am Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Swabhava. What is the bandhan? What is a bondage? No bondage. Because there is only one self. There is no second. That's why Advaita we say. Ekameva Advaita. Why we have to say Advaita? <clears throat> why not only one? Ekam. No. Because when I say ek, understand one. Suppose I say one rupee. Then what? There can be many coins of one rupee. Understand this properly. When I say one, there can be many one. But here one advitya, one non-dual. There is no second. Therefore, that, that secondness has to be called. Lord is not second. Lord is not after me or before me. I am the Lord. And therefore, the knowledge is moksha. Not by knowledge moksha. Understand this. This is another problem. Not by knowledge you gain moksha. Knowledge is moksha. Knowing rope is a getting rid of the snake. Same way, knowledge is moksha. Because there is no second thing is there. <clears throat> there is only one consciousness which is you. Bhagavan also is that consciousness. You are also that consciousness. That is a sachi ananda. Understand? And therefore, there is no time period. But when it comes to the preparation, there is aneka janma samsita. For the preparation, a lot of things are required. But for knowledge, it is once and for all. Therefore, Swamiji used to tell, ignorance goes, goes forever. Knowledge takes place, it's forever. And therefore, it's not you become gnani. This is another problem. Look at this word gnani. There is no gnani, understand? Who is gnani? Tell me. Dhani. Dhani means what? See, that's why Sanskrit is important. Dhani means one who has a money is called dhani. Grihi, one who has a house is called grihi. Understand? That means what? The, 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 the house and the person are two separate. Dhani word is there. That means what? Dhanam asya asti iti dhani. Inach pratke, understand? That means what? The dhanam, the dhanam, the money and the person are two. So when you say gnani, that is a problem. That's the that's the limitation of the word. Knowledge and the person are two. You are gnana swaru. Satyam gnana manantam brahma. Understand? You are the gnanam brahma. Where is the gnani? You gain knowledge. Understand? I am Gnani. I am wise person. 
If I say I'm Gnani, that means what? I and knowledge are two separate things, like Dhani and Grihi. Therefore, for our understanding, we use Yogi, we use word Gnani, understand, that inner, for understanding, for teaching. But in reality, there is no Gnani because he is Brahman. It's not that I know Brahman. If I say Gnani, means you have to say, translate, he knows Brahman. Then that's a problem. Because if I know Brahman, then I am the knower of the Brahman. No, I am Brahman. Therefore, in Munda Upanishad, it says, Brahmavit Brahmaiva Bhavat. The knower of the Brahman himself is Brahman. Understand? So it's not the knower of Brahman. He himself is. That's why I always tell that it's not that he knows Brahman. Understand this sentence now. It is not that he knows Brahman. He knows I am Brahman. Do you understand? Do you see the difference? He is not the knower of the Brahman. He knows I am Brahman. That's why Brahmavita Brahmaiva Bhavati. The one who knows Brahman, he himself is a Brahma Eva. Means only Brahma. Therefore, knowing oneself is moksha. You see that you are Brahman, that is moksha. If you see I am mundane person, I am body, mind, science, I am doctor, I am advocate, I am professor, I am lecturer, samsara. You see I am Brahman, moksha. Therefore, knowledge is moksha. There is no two things out there, no thing, simultaneous. And karma lakshana bhakti and upasana lakshana bhakti, when you say, it is all one and the same. According to the, understand this, another point, we have to understand that different people are with different kind of the prarabdha. Some people have a prarabdha of the karma, so he performs the action. That's called karma lakshana. Some people have an aptitude of meditation, like Ramon Maharshi and all these people. So he has the upasana lakshana bhakti. It, nothing is, it is all according to prarabdha. See, there is a verse, very popular verse. Eh? Look at this one. Even for now, the, the wise person also, this is there. Very beautiful verse. Shukastyagi Krishna Bhogi. Shukastyagi Krishna Bhogi. Rama Janaka Undrupa. Karma Rataha Vashishthadaya. So, according to the Prarabdha, there are different lifestyles out there. Ram, Bhagwan Sri Ram, and Raja Janak, they were king. Vashishtha, Brahabharadwad, Shaunaka, all these munis, they were performing yajyas. Shukastyagi. Shukadev even didn't have a, he never bothered about the cloth also. Krishna Bhogi, 16,108 means were there. Bhogi, Knane to Sarve Saman. From the standpoint of the knowledge of the self, they are all same. But according to the Prarabdha, somebody have a lifestyle of Karma Lakshana Bhakti, somebody has a lifestyle of Upasana Lakshana Bhakti, somebody has a lifestyle of teaching Vedanta. It's all Prarabdha, understand. It has nothing to do with knowledge and nothing to do with the hierarchy, better and good and nothing. It's a lifestyle. According to Prarabdha, whatever lifestyle is given, we live that life. That's the, how it is. Am I clear or further questions? Uh, if you have any further questions, you can just uh, put it in Q&A box. Uh, we will just wait for a few more minutes. Uh, any other viewers has any questions, please um, uh, share the questions with us on the Q&A box. Um, Swaminiji, um, as we wait for if there are any questions, I wanted to ask you one thing. In this Upasana Lakshana Bhakti, I mean, especially among the Vaishnavas uh, who base their teachings mostly on Bha Bhagavata Purana, 
So they speak about bhakti yoga, navavida bhakti, navada bhakti, uh, which is uh, shavana, kirtana, and uh, uh, smarana, padasevana, and all. So what they they teach is uh, based on the Bhagavad Purana that once uh, somebody has performed uh, karmanushthana and has gained sufficient vairagya, then he can either go for the jnana yoga or he can go for this bhakti yoga, which is shavana, kirtana, manana and all, and uh, which comes with its own Bhagavad dharmas, that is what they say. So do we find such an idea of bhakti yoga within uh, Bhagavad Gita also? Yeah, this whole bhakti also is given here in the ninth. See, from seventh chapter, if you see, all bhakti is there. Yeah, so then, what talks about in this particular? Pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati. Then that is all the puja. Patram pushpam. See, tulsi. So Rukmini was trying. I think Satya Bhama was trying to vain Lord Krishna. You know. And then Rukmini came and put one patra, tulsi, and happened. Pushpa. We offer flower. Gajendra example is there. You offered one lotus to Lord Vishnu. And Lord Vishnu appeared to protect him. Patram pushpam toyam. Abhishekam to Shiva. He, you gain the grace of Bhagavan. So then all these are given here. Patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhakti prayachati. So, as I said, it is according to your prarabdha and according to your aptitude. What kind of the lifestyle you are leading. But there is nothing is, this one is better than this. Don't compare that. You know, that Narsi Mehta is better than Meera or Meera is better than Tukara. No, no comparison. Understand. It's a, it's a prarabdha. According to their prarabdha and according to their swabhava or the Purva Janma Sanskara, they lead their life here. So, Shramanam, Kirtanam, all this is are there. But which one is highlighted in their life? Somebody like Kirtanam is highlighted. Somewhere the Shramanam is highlighted in their life. Somebody is that Puja, Sevanam is highlighted in their life. So, it is all based on their sanskara and their prarabdha. One thing is highlighted. That's a simple thing. You know. Suppose you see this Vallabhacharya, the Srinathji in, in, in Rajasthan, you know. They have this Ashtapada. Ashtapada means all eight prahara you do puja of Krishna. So that's the way you keep yourself busy. Your mind is totally dedicated to Krishna. It's called Shuddha Dvaita, that particular part. Like Ramanuja Acharya is Vishishta Dvaita. The Madhava Acharya is a Dvaita. The Nimbaka Acharya is Dvaita Dvaita. Chachit Jarvada. And then the Vallabha Acharya is Shuddha Dvaita. But everything, what I say, in Bhagavat, very basic of Bhagavat is that in any manner you get connected to Ishwara. Even the, by Shatru Bhava also, if you are connected to Ishwara, he is going to give you moksha. Because important thing is that you are connected to Ishwara or not. That is important. See, that's why why Bhagavan is telling Shraddhaman Bajate, why he is the best yogi, because he is totally connected to Ishwara. That is our life. By karma, by upasana, by puja, by sevanam, whatever way, you be connected to Ishwara. That is important. That's why Swamiji says bhakti means what? Relating to Ishwara. What way you are related to Ishwara is different. Kamsa and then Shishupal and Ravana, Kumbhakarana or Shatru Bhava. Bhava has no importance. Whether you remember Ishwara with Shatru Bhava or Mitra Bhava or Rasa Bhava is not in Bhava is not important. You are connected to Ishwara is important and that is what highlighted. Am I clear? Yes, yes, Swamiji. Uh, but my question was basically about whether the idea of uh, Navada Bhakti is found in the Bhagavad Gita, whether there is seeds of that idea. No. Navada Bhakti is not in Gita. Okay. Bhakti is there. Navada Bhakti is afterward it is. That, that particular idea of Navada Bhakti came in Purana. Not in Gita or Upanishad that Navada Bhakti is not there. But in Purana they have this uh, nine types of Bhakti. But in Gita we don't have Navada Bhakti. Okay, okay. Thank you, Swaminiji. I have not received 
any new questions mm -hmm. uh, so uh, viewers if uh, uh, after this session if you have any questions you can always email us and we'll forward it to swamini ji and uh, uh, she would uh, definitely respond based on her availability and time uh, uh, we don't have any more questions uh, swamini ji so do you want to do the uh, final uh, uh, sh shloka yeah prayer i will do yes yes oh asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrutyor ma amrutangamaya om namada namidam purnat purnamudachate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate <coughs> om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om hari thank you very much uh, swamini ji for making time uh, for whole day i would say for uh, uh, sharing all these important thoughts important teachings with all of us uh, thank you very much on the behalf of entire uh, indica moksha team and all of our viewers my pleasure to do that it was a very enlightening very enriching uh, uh, sessions and a lot of food for thought i'm sure all of our audience has uh, deeply benefited from this and uh, uh, viewers uh, don't forget to follow us on facebook and twitter uh, we will be posting uh, announcements about our upcoming events talks retreats interviews and other things so if in case anybody has missed attending this live session we will be uploading this talk again on our youtube channel advaita academy in, uh, you can search for our channel so you can watch it again in, in case you want to you know reflect further on this teachings so with this we conclude uh, this session Shri Gurbhyo Namaha. Oh.